Come on, why don't we give God some praise? Come on, church, it's Sunday morning. Why don't we give God some praise this morning? Who's excited to be in the house of God on this beautiful Sunday? You made it out. Congratulations. This is week two of the new year. And I believe many of us are beginning a new habit in our lives where we're putting God first every first day of the week. You're in the house today. You're online today watching from wherever you are. I want us to make this commitment that this will be the best year of our lives that we've had so far. But why? Not because we're so great and amazing and you're so good looking, you're so awesome, but why? Because we're gonna put God first this year. How many are ready to say 2024 will be a year where God is number one in my life? I'm really proud of you for being here today. Let's begin, let's open up in a word of prayer. God, we thank you. You gave us a new day. You didn't have to, but you did. And today, this day, we dedicate to you this moment and this time, we dedicate our attention and our focus all on you, Jesus. This is about you. This is not about me. This is not about my opinion. We want to hear from you, God. So Holy Spirit, come. Come in this place. Fill our hearts. Overwhelm us, Lord. We welcome you to speak to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say... Amen. Why don't you have a seat, give your neighbor a high five, and just tell them, I'm so glad to see you in church today. Praise the Lord. It is January 14th. We are officially, well, just about halfway through the first month of the year. Is 2024 flying by, or is it just me? Is it kind of going fast? Well, praise God. My name is uh, Christian. I'm the campus pastor here at Hallmark Campus. My favorite campus. Don't tell the other campuses. My favorite. And Pastor Marco right now is in Safford, Arizona, preaching at our Safford, Arizona campus. Give Pastor Marco a round of applause. I don't know if he's watching, but let him hear it. We thank Pastor Marco and all he's done for us. And, but today what we're going to talk about we're gonna, I want to talk to you about is the blessings of putting God first. Some will say the blessings of putting God first. You know, we're going to talk about these blessings. And, but that word, that word first, the, the word first is really important. The greatest number is the number one. And another way to say number one is first place. But here's the thing. Here's a question. What or who has num the number one spot in your lives. And whoever or whatever has that number one spot in your life is what's leading you. So when God is first, we have put him in the winning spot in our lives. And if we put God in the winning spot, then we by default win. Come on, someone say, I win. So this year, I believe we're gonna make this commitment then I'm going to put God first in my life, in everything that I do. I'm not going to put him in second, not in third or fourth, because the only place that God can sit in my life is number one. But what's leading you right now? That's a big question. What has your biggest focus and your biggest attention? What leads you? What sways you in everything that you do? Well, whatever that is, whatever it is, whatever that person is, that's actually the person or the thing that's leading your life. And I want you to understand something. That every, anything other than Jesus that's leading your life, anything other than the Lord, always leads to the same destination. It ends in destruction. It ends in pain. It ends in hurt. It ends in confusion. It ends in misery. And these are not things we want for our lives but we don't realize sometimes that when we decide to put something else as number one in our lives, it leads us down the same old road. Who's in here is tired of the same old cycles year after year? Who for once and for all saying, you know what? I want this year to be different than last year. I don't want to do the same old things and I'm ready for new. How many are with me on that? You're saying, I want this to be a fresh year. Well, if this is going to be a fresh year, and you're gonna, you, want, you want to see the blessings of God in your year and in your life, you must decide 
to put God first in your life. That's the only way. Someone say, I put God first. So this year we're going to do all we can to put God first. We're starting the year with the 21 day fast. As a church, we've been fasting. If you know what fasting is, fasting is when we, sometimes we put like food or things aside just to say, God, I'm going to put my, I'm going to discipline my flesh so that I can learn to put you first. And it is hard driving by in and out and saying no. That is hard. But if you could tell your body, if you could tell in and out no, then you could say no when sin comes creeping in the door. You could say no. That's all we're doing. We're training our flesh to listen and to stop leading us. That's what fasting is. So if you want to jump in the fast, jump in. We got a few days left. We're also starting this year in our growth book. The growth book is where we study devotionals. We go through scripture every day. We, we have fresh growth books, by the way. We are committing to showing up for impartation services at the end of the month. We're attending Holy Warriors classes. Many of you are joining Holy Warriors and saying, I'm going to commit my life to God and be discipled. We're committing to tithing, which is bringing our first increase to the Lord. And we're, we're committing to bring a once a year first fruit offering to God. And what happens when we do these things? Well, God responds to our efforts and, and our decision to put him first by releasing his blessing on our lives. Someone just needs to lift their hands right now and say, God, I receive the blessing. Who's with me on that? I want that blessing in my life. I want that blessing in your life. And I believe God has so much more than we can even think or ask him for. Come on, how many believe that? God has so much more for you. So let's jump into it. Before I, guide, before I dive into the blessings, we're going we're gonna to lay the groundwork really quick. I want us to talk and understand why we put God first. First section we're going to cover is that God commands us to put him first. Now that's big. This isn't a suggestion or a better way. This is a command. Jesus is the only way. So God commands us to put him first. It says in Exodus 20 verse 3, you shall have no other gods before me or besides me. So what does it mean to put him first? Well, it's before all others in respect to time. It means the first in order, first in rank, first in importance. Of course, in first place, at the beginning, it means leader and it means winning position. Is God in that position in your life? This is a command that God tells us. You can't have any other gods before me. And, and here's another thing. God is saying, I need to be so number one that you can't have even a God beside me. There's only room on the throne of your heart for one person. And who decides who goes there? It's you. You decide who sits on the throne of your heart. And there's room for one. And that right, the rightful person to sit in that place, his name is Jesus. So, he says, you shall have no other gods before me. That word before is a Hebrew word, al, which means above, over, or in first place. You shall have no other gods, no other things above me. You shall have nothing else or no one else over me. You shall have no one else in first place besides me. This is what God is saying. Just imagine the pain that I will go through. Say my wife came to me and said, Christian, I love you, but I also love somebody else too. But I still love you. But can you share first place with this other guy too? Maybe I could split the time, but you're both number one. Okay, that's, first of all, they ain't gonna fly with me. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. We ain't having all this. I'm gonna make me get my flesh. That's not going to go, but let's just say hypothetically that conversation happened. Just imagine the kind of pain that I would be in, the turmoil in my heart. I felt, I would feel, even if she said, I'll share the time with you, I'd feel like I lost my wife. Here's a real question. Here's a real thing. Are we doing the same thing to the Lord? Have we told God this? God, you're first. I'll go to church on Sunday. I'll do it but I, I can't give this up on the side. 
God, I'll make sure first two weeks, I'm two weeks in a row, I'm at church, but God, I, uh, you know, I still got this little fling going on on the, on the side. I just got to hit the club on a weekend. You know, I got to do me. Just imagine the turmoil and the pain. God is saying, I have so much blessing for you. I have so much favor for you. I have so much breakthrough for you and your family. You wonder why you're still dealing with depression and anxiety. You wonder why your kids are acting crazy. You wonder why these things are happening. Try putting me first because I have some great things in store for you. I can't share this with anybody else. It's me or it's somebody else. So we got to put God first. I'm going to say put God first. Here's some examples of, in this scripture, in Exodus 20, verse 3, when we look at that scripture, the way it's actually written, and, and we have it all caps here, but in your Bible, it'll be a lowercase g. And all these lowercase g gods, some examples of modern day things we deal with today that can be a lowercase g god in your life that tries to take things, uh, tries to take first place in your life. Here's some examples. It could be your money. It's quiet up in here. It could be your material possessions, your car, your home. It could be a relationship. What about lust, sexual morality? It could be a drug. It could be drinking. It could be any form of entertainment. It could be your hobby, your career. It could even be yourself. There are so many different things that we could try and put above God in our lives. And if we start living this lifestyle where we put things above God in our lives, then we get the results of those things in our lives. And we wonder why I'm still dealing with pain. We wonder why I can't get set free from this anxiety. Sometimes we wonder why I'm still dealing with bondage. I told God I want to be set free from it. And all he's saying is, put me first because I can set you free. Jesus says, who the Son sets free is free indeed. Your drugs can't set you free. They might numb the pain for a moment. Your money can't set you free. They cannot buy your health. They cannot buy your peace of mind. They cannot buy hope in your heart. Maybe your relationship feels good for a little bit, but in the end night you're still crying inside and you're still full of pain. None of those things can set you free. And there's only one that can. His name is Jesus. And he's saying, put me first because I can set you free. Come on, how many want that blessing of freedom this year like never before? Put them first. So then he goes on to say, Jesus also says this. Jesus says you cannot have two number ones. We can only have one Lord over our lives. There's only one number one. Look at Matthew 6, 24. Turn with me there. It says no one can serve two masters. Nobody can do that. Nobody has been able to accomplish this task here, serve two masters at the same time. It cannot be done. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. What is mammon? It's this word, it could mean money, possessions, it could be fame. It could be status or whatever's valued uh, uh, more than the Lord. Jesus has made it very, very clear. You cannot serve both sides. You cannot play the fence. You cannot be with this person and that person at the same time. It can't happen. You can't, you can't serve both sides. You can't uh, accomplish both missions at the same time. You can't live for both things. It cannot happen. And this is what we under, need to understand, that God isn't just saying, include me in your life. God is saying, I need to become your everything. I need to become number one in your life. I need to be in first place. Otherwise, you can't share it with anybody else. Look, at, there's three things we can learn from this verse. First observation I can learn from this scripture, Matthew 6, 24, is when God is number one, we serve him. I just want to serve God all of my life. I made a decision at a young age. I made a decision around 13 or 14 years old that I'm going to serve God. And although there's been times it's been tough, it's been rocky, it's been hard, but I made a decision at one point in my life that my life is his. I had all these dreams and aspirations and things, and I said, God, all of my visions in life, I just dedicate to you, and I want whatever you have for me. 
And the moment I made that decision, I was more fulfilled. I was more at peace. I was happier. I had purpose in life. And I didn't feel like I was living life just for me, empty inside. One day I finally decided, God, you're, not, you're my number one. I don't care if people laugh at me. I don't care if my family judges me. I don't care if my friends judge me. You're number one. So whatever you say goes. Come on, how many are with me on this? I don't care what people say anymore. God's number one in my life. This is good. So now, the word serve in this scripture it's a Greek word, for it's duleo, which means obey, submit, yield to, do his will, and carry out his purpose. You know, the reason we can't serve two masters is because the two masters have opposing commands. There's an opposing mission. You can't be on the winning side and the losing side at the same time. Can't do it. Can't be a Laker fan and a Clipper fan at the same time. Can't. All of a sudden, Lakers are winning. You're like, yeah, I'm a Laker fan. Then Clippers get hot. You're like, actually, I've been a Clipper fan since back in the day. You didn't know? You didn't know? Psh. Can't do it. There's different commands. If, if the devil tells you go left, but God is telling you go right, what are you going to do? You're going to do and you're going to follow the command of whoever's first in your life. That's what you're going to do. I can't do both. I can't go there and then try to come back. And I can't go there and then go over here. I can't be split in my decision. I have to decide once and for all whom I'm going to serve. And this is what we all come to. It says in, 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 in you know, you know the, here's some examples of, of, a ma of like two masters' voice. Maybe, maybe there's a voice that says, God says, be faithful to your wife. Be faithful to your wife. But then the enemy's voice says this. Well, you know, a little bit, a little fling on the side won't hurt nobody. You still love her. Maybe one voice says something like, um, uh, be honest and integral in what you do. And then the enemy's voice says, well, you'll get away with it. No one will know. And if no one knows, it don't hurt nobody. There's two voices. Let me tell you a story in my life when I had two voices. Not like a, I wasn't going crazy. I just, you know, it was God and the devil. The devil be talking sometimes. I remember I, I did some plumbing work at my house. A lot of fun. I did some plumbing work at my house. Got to get something done. Had a plumber come out, take care of it. Did a great job. And once it was done, this is, this is years ago actually. Once it was done, the, the plumber left and, and forgot to take a payment. And, and, and it, for me, it was just kind of out of sight, out of mind. I just forgot about it. Well, it turns out a year later, a year later, I'm going through my, my emails. You know, your spammy email that has like 14,000 unreads? That one, I have, that, I have one of those. <laughs> That's my spam one. That's where I get all my discounts. So I just give them that email. But I, I went through this email. I was just going, I was looking for something. And I come across an invoice from over a year ago. And lo and behold, it was the invoice for the plumbing work. So I had two voices. The first voice told me, God just blessed you. Receive it, my child. You don't have to pay. It's been so long ago. Hallelujah. Give God praise for your blessing. Lie. And then a second voice came and said, pay it. Be a man of integrity, pay it. Be honest in what you do, pay it. The first voice is like, well, you forgot. You, you just forgot, right? Honest mistake. Because I did forget. I wasn't trying to be hush-hush about it. I just forgot. He forgot. We all forgot. <laughs> so the devil's like, just, you, you forgot. That's a long time ago. They, they ain't going to remember. This invoice isn't valid probably. Just go on. But God said, pay it. So what did I do? I said, hallelujah, thank you for your blessing, God. I receive. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I called him right away. I apologized for, not, for missing it. 
I said, I am so sorry. I'm paying this right now. And I want you to text me back right away to confirm that you received the payment. I know this was a year ago. I know you for, they forgot. I forgot, but I said, I'm a man of integrity. And God is telling me I need to pay this thing. You did work on my house. I'm going to pay you. I'm going to make sure you're taken care of. See, we need to be people that stop listening to the voice of the enemy. Maybe you'll get away with it when we think we're going to get away with it. But the reality is you're ruining your character. You're becoming somebody that's being accustomed to listening to the voice of the devil. And now the devil is number one in your life. When he speaks, you follow. When he says jump, you jump. When he says go left or right, you go left or right. But I am done listening to the voice of the devil because I am tired of getting his results in my life. I am done dealing with my cycle, my depression. Come on, you got to be tired of being tired. You got to get to the point where you are tired of the results and you're ready for a breakthrough. Is there anybody in here who's ready for a breakthrough in your life? Here's another observation from just this scripture. When God is not number one in our lives, we will begin to hate him. So how crazy is that? It says for you either hate the one and love the other. You either hate one and love the other. So, you know, you can't love the enemy and love his sin and love God at the same time. It says here, it says, could it be, could it be, here's just think about this. That we think we're loving God, but we're actually hating him with our lifestyle. That word hate, I know it sounds harsh and you may be thinking, I don't hate God, I love him. But, but this word hate in the Greek is miseo. The word hate actually means reject. Now we're putting things into perspective here. Have we rejected God? Have we rejected his instruction, rejected his voice? There's been times in my life I've rejected the voice of God and I've pushed him away. You know what that leads to? This next thing, it leads to me opposing him. Not only did I reject once and I think I'll, I'll be okay, I'll just reject this this once. No, now I start to oppose the will of God because it doesn't line up with the lifestyle and the sin I'm trying to live in. Come on, it's quiet up in here. So, so hate begins to develop into rejection, and now I oppose. And then what it does, does it develop into? It, mean, it develops to me becoming unwilling. Now I'm unwilling to do what God has called me to do. Now I'm unwilling to follow him. Now I'm unwilling to go to church. Come to church. You used to go to church beginning of 2024. Remember, you're two weeks in a row. You were, you were going hot, on fire for the Lord. Nah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go. I'm unwilling now to put God first. Then it develops into having no use for. Could it be that you get to the point where you feel like you have no use for God? I don't need God. I don't need his favor. I got it. I make enough money. I'm good. You know, a little, little this and that. On the, you know, I'm fine. Life's going good, life is smooth, but how sad would it be that we get to a point, we hit rock bottom only because our sin led us there and our pain, our, our, our choices led us there and we get to a place of pain. But, but here's the beautiful thing about God. Maybe you're at that point right now. Maybe you're at a place, a, a place where you feel like you're at your lowest, where you're at a place of pain in your heart. God is so good that he can go down to the darkest pit of where you're at. He can reach down to the gutter and pick you up and say, son, daughter, I love you. I have a plan for you. I have not given up on you and I still have good things in store for you. Believe me, God has not given up on you and he never will. He's still got a good plan for your life. Give God some praise for that. He's faithful. The third observation we could see here, when God is number one, we're devoted to him above everything and everyone else. It says in that scripture again, it says, you, you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. I can't be devoted to two sides. The word devoted is this word antecho, which means follow and obey, give careful attention to, have high regard for, to hold on to firmly. I love that. You can only hold on to one thing at a time. And I choose this year, I'm holding on firmly to God. 
As much as I may be swayed, as hard as a storm might be in my life, as tough as those winds push, I'm holding on firmly to the Lord. As much as the world might try to pull me, my old friends try to hit me up to go out with them, the old temptation to fall into that pornography and that sin, I am holding on firmly to the Lord. I'm not letting go. It may be rocky, it may be tough, but I'm holding on because I'm devoted to him and he is number one in my life. I'm holding on. Someone say, hold on. To endure and to not let go. So good. God commands us to put him first. Not only do we put him first, maybe the question you have in your mind is this, how do I do that? How do I actually put God first? Well, here's how. This leads us to our next, I'm sorry, excuse me, next section. It's how do we put God first? Number one, we put God first through practicing radical and immediate obedience. So say this with me, say first in devotion. When I'm devoted to God, I practice putting him first in everything that I do. Now I'm radically obeying God and immediately, I immediately obey him, I radically obey him. If he asks me to do something, I do it. As hard as it may be, I obey. This is us saying, Lord, I will do and I will give you whatever you ask of me. I am your servant. I belong to you to fulfill your will. Through radical and immediate obedience, even Abraham proved that God was first. Turn with me to Genesis 22. I want to share with you a story in scripture of radical obedience. Maybe you've never heard this story before. It's going to sound crazy. Here we go. Verse 1. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Some would say it's testing time. Do you know that tests always happen? We're constantly going through these tests in life. You pass the test. You're here at church on Sunday, first day of the week. Give yourself a round of applause. You made it. You made it. Maybe you said last year, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. And you never did, but you made it. You're here. Online, you said, I'm going to watch something else on YouTube. But you're online right now. You made us. Give our online people a hand. You're here. So... This is a test time. This is Abraham's test. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. Take your son, your only son. Yes, Isaac, whom you love so much. And go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. If I put myself in Abraham's shoes in that moment, I can feel the agony and the pain of thinking of giving away and sacrificing the only son you have. And in this day and age, your son is everything. It's your legacy, it's your name, it's, it's everything you leave behind. Without a son, you have no legacy. This is all of it. Just imagine the pain of that, the, 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 the test that he was in in that moment. But here's what's so good. Verse 3 gets crazy. Verse 3, the next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey, took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. And then he chopped down wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God told him about. He, obe he obeyed right away. Radical and immediate obedience is how we put God first. This was a test. Someone say it's test time. So he, Abraham was being put through this test. I'll fast forward. At the end of this story, God stops him. God was testing Abraham. Right before Abraham's going to give up his son at the altar, God stops and says, no, stop. Don't lay a hand on the boy. Now I see that you have faith. Now I see 
that I have your heart. Now I see that you're number, I'm number one in your life. Now I see that you trust me. Now I see that you pass the test. And right now you could be going through the test of your life. And trust me, it may feel like you're giving up something good, but don't worry. Even if you feel like you're giving that up, God has something better in store for you. Just remember, one closed door means God got another door open for me. If this relationship doesn't work out, that's okay. They were not the one for me. If I lose my job, that's all good with me because God got a better job for me. I know this, that if God is for me, there is nobody who can come against me. Make God number one and he will give you the best in life. So he stops Abraham but because Abraham passed the test. It's test time to see if God is really first in your life. Is he first? Is he first in your life? God is going to see it through that test. Someone say it's test time. Number two, how do I put God first? Number two, we put God first by seeking him in the beginning of each day and each week. Someone say first in time. So we learn that first in devotion, we receive God, we, we put him first in our devotion, but not just that, we put him first in our time. So what's the first thing you do every day? Don't say it out loud. I don't know what it is. Don't say it. Like TikTok. I ain't gonna lie. TikTok. I just be Instagram. I just be go straight to my Instagram. Who liked my stuff? No one liked it. That's crazy. What's the first thing you go to in the morning? What's the first thing you devote your time to? Every morning that we start off, start off our day in studying the word or even the daily growth book that has a word. Every day we start off studying the word and praying, we are putting God first. We're putting him first. Give God the best of your day. Show God he's number one in your life by giving him the first and the best. It wouldn't make sense to say, God, you're number one, but I put you 11th. God, you're number one, but I got some other things to do first. I'll get around to you. But what does make sense to say, God, you're number one. Although I'm tired, although I'm tempted to go to other things, God, you're number one in my life. And I'm going to sacrifice, I'm going to discipline myself, and I'm going to put you first. We must develop. We must develop the habit of putting God first by starting each day with time for God. Make God your first appointment of every day. I heard Pastor Vlad, he's uh, Pastor Vlad Savchuk, he said this, it's a great saying. He said, your devotion must first become a discipline before it becomes a desire. So maybe you've woken up in the mornings, if there's anyone like me in the room, some, some mornings you wake up and you just, you ain't feeling it. You're more grumpy. You're just like, I just, man, I get up early and pray and read my Bible. But it takes you disciplining your body first. I don't feel like it, but I'm going to do it. I want to snooze one more time, but I know I'm going to not have time to get in my word and pray. So I'm going to not snooze and I'm going to get up and pray. If I got to put my Bible right there next to my pillow, I'm going to do it. Whatever I got to do, I'm going to put God first. It must be a discipline before it becomes something you desire. So if you don't feel like doing it, keep doing it and you'll build an appetite for it. Whatever you give your attention and your focus and your time to, you build an appetite for. Get in the word and you'll start to love the word. Get into some prayer and you'll start to love praying. Spend time with God and you'll desire it. I added something else to, to Pastor Vlad saying, he says, devotion's first to desire. I'm sorry, first to devote, I'm sorry, first to discipline. It's first to discipline, then it's a desire. And one thing I added, then it's a desperation. It becomes something you're desperate for. I want to get to the point in my life where I cannot go a single day without spending time with God. I want to get to the point in my life where I recognize how important and how valuable my relationship with the Lord is. I cannot do it without him. I cannot live a day without him. To be, to be a good husband, I can't do without God. To be a good leader, I cannot do that without the Lord. My career, I can't do it. My day, I just can't do it without the Lord. I am desperate like oxygen in my lungs. I need God in my day. I cannot do it without him. How many are saying I want to be desperate for the Lord in my life. 
Psalms 143, verse 8 says, Every morning, help me to remember your faithful love because I am trusting in you. Show me how I should live to please you because I know that I belong to you. What a beautiful scripture. What a beautiful prayer. Every morning, God, show me, lead me, teach me, help me to remember your love. Psalm 63, one, look at this scripture. It says, oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. What a beautiful prayer and a, a scripture to live by that every morning and every day I commit to giving God my time, to giving God my morning, to giving God my day. We will not seek him early if we don't make a decision and declare it. If you don't commit right now to do it, and here's the thing, don't, don't live like this, please. I'll see how I feel in the morning. You already know how you're gonna feel in the morning. You're gonna be tired. Someone's gonna hit you up on Instagram. You're going to see all the, you're going to be all distracted. Don't live that way. Make a commitment now that Monday morning on January 15th, I'm going to wake up early and I'm going to see God. Even if it's for five minutes, I read a few verses, I'm going to do it. Even if I'm praying five minutes more than I have been, three minutes more, it does not matter. But in the morning, I'm going to seek the Lord. I'm going to give him my first and my best, acknowledge him, and spend time with my number one. God is number one in our lives. On the, on the, on not only on the first day of each week, but even on the first, I'm sorry, on the first morning, not only the first morning, but even on the first day of each week, let's put him first by coming together and worshiping him. It says in Acts chapter 20, verse 7, now on the first day of each week, which is what? Sunday, when we gather together to break bread, to share communion, which is to honor and glorify God. We come together and you've come together today on this beautiful Sunday to honor God and to worship him. We're not here for no superstar worship leader. We're not here for some superstar pastor teacher. We're here for one person. We're here for Jesus. We're here for the one that can set you free. We're here for the one that can give you hope. We're here for the only one that can pay the price for your sin and forgive you. His name is Jesus and he is our number one. His name is? His name is? Come on, his name is? Jesus. That's who we're here for. That's why we come to church. That's why we gather. So don't leave church because, oh, I didn't like that song today. Or, oh, someone took my seat. Or the parking was crazy. No, I'm not here for parking. I'm not here for my playlist that I like. I'm not here for my favorite seat. I'm here for Jesus. So I have to, if I have to sit in the back, I'm going to sit in the back. If I have to be in the rafters, I'm going to be in the rafters. If I have to be on the side, I will because I'm here for Jesus. Is there anybody who's here for Jesus this morning that's why we come to church yeah, I, know, I know I said I'd get to the blessings but I, I don't know if I even have time we might have to save that for next week Pastor Marco is going to be in the building next Sunday bringing an awesome word but let's go point number three this is how how do I put God first we put them first by bringing our tithes and our first fruit offerings to him. Say this with me. Say first in our finances. So we said first in our devotion. We've said first in our time. What about first in our finances? Uh-oh. Hold up, pastor. You're getting a little too personal there. What does tithing do? Well, first of all, tithe is what is a tithe? A tithe is the first 10% of our increase. What's the purpose of it? It says it in the Bible, Deuteronomy 14, 20. It says the purpose of tithing is to teach you always to put God first in your lives. So tithing is my teacher. The only way I can go to school and learn is if I'm practicing my tithing. Now, some of us wonder why we just can't receive from God. And God is saying, because I still don't have your heart. Your money has your heart. Your bank account has your heart. Your tithe has been given to other things. Your first and your best have been given to other people and to other things. You didn't give your tithe to God, you gave your tithe to Louis. 
Sorry, ladies. I don't mean to call you out like that. You gave your tithe. You gave your tithe to, to your car. Maybe you gave your tithe to, to your gym membership. Maybe you gave your tithe to something else. And what God is saying, these other things actually have first in your life because what you do with what your increase really proves and shows who's number one in your life. It's quiet up in here. Tithing is a test to see whether God is first or not. So when we give our first fruit offerings and our tithe, what we're doing is we're honoring God as first in our lives. We tell God, God, I trust you. I believe in you. I don't believe my wallet. My wallet acts funny, but God, I know that you still remain. God, I don't trust my job because my job is fickle. It can be here one day and not be here the next. God, I don't trust the market because we all know what happened in COVID. The market goes up one day and it comes tumbling down. God, I don't trust any of those things, but I trust in you. So I give you my first. I give you my best. I give you my everything. I trust in you. Someone say, I trust God. Look at Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. It says, honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. That word honor means to show gratitude. How many are thankful for what God has done in your life? Amen. Well, the way you, you honor God is by showing your gratitude to him. What does honor mean? It also means, it's, it's the Hebrew word, kabad. It means to show gratitude and respect. I respect God. I honor him and I respect him. It also means to give credit. This is good. Some of us need to start getting, giving God some credit for the good things that are happening in your life. You got breath in your lungs. When was the last time you gave God credit for that? You made it here today? Give God some credit. Some of you should not be here right now. Some of you should have died in that car accident a long time ago. Some of you should have lost your minds from all the drugs that you did when you were younger, but you're here today. Some of you should have been locked up for life, but you're out by God's grace. You're here in the building today. Some of you were supposed to be aborted in your mother's womb, but you made it out of the womb and you're here today. And some of us need to give God some credit that he made, we made it today. We made it to 2024. I'm alive. I could breathe. I could hear the word of the Lord and I got to give God some credit for all the good things. Is there anybody that wants to give God credit for the good things he's done in you and in your life today? Give God some credit in this place. Honor the Lord. Someone say, honor the Lord. It says, honor the Lord with what? With your possessions. Now it gets quiet. <laughs> See, but here's the reality. God is not looking for your hype. God does not want just to shout and to clap. And, and, and here's the thing. Praise is powerful. And praise is, is amazing because that will get you through some of the, that's a weapon to get you through some things. But praise is genuine when it begins to be reflected in all of the decisions you make in your life. Let your praise be real and raw. And let's choose and decide that I'm going to put God first, by, not just in my day, not just in my week, not just in my devotion, not just in my time, but even in my possessions, he's number one. And it says, and with the first fruits of all your increase. First fruits is, it's reishith. Hebrew word reishith, which means first in time and place, at the beginning, the most important, chief, paramount, above others in rank, above others in authority and in power. And the first fruit offering is something we can only bring at the beginning of a cycle, of a new season. And being that it's the beginning of the year, we have a chance to bring a first fruit offering and honor God with our possessions. You know, some of you guys may have got this envelope. This is my envelope. I'm taking this home. My wife and I are going to pray. And we're going to hear from God. And next Sunday, January 21st, we're going to bring a first fruit offering. But not just next Sunday. You can bring it Sunday or all throughout impartation week, the thir uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or even the, the following Sunday. But we're going to pray. And I believe this. I'm going to give this. And I know that verse 10 is going to happen in my life. You guys ready for verse 10? This is good. Someone's got to receive this. Verse 10 says, so your barns 
Verse 10, Proverbs 3, 10. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. When I bring my first fruit offering, I don't lose it. I get more back. When I give God my heart, I don't lose that. I get more back. When I give God my sin, my pain, my depression, my anxiety, he doesn't give me depression and anxiety back. I get something greater back. I get his peace. I get his favor. I get his joy. I get his his love. I get his breakthrough. I get his freedom. When we put God first, we receive the blessings of God in our lives. How many want the blessing of God in your life? Praise the Lord. Last scripture, I'm going to read. Mark 10. It's a story of someone that could not put Jesus in first place. It says, as Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came running up to him knelt down and asked, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. He said, there's still one thing you haven't done. Go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. And at this, the man's face fell. And he went away sad, for he had many possessions. You know, what God isn't saying here, I want to make sure this is clear. God isn't saying you have to go sell all your stuff, give your money to the poor, then come follow him. But Jesus recognized something in this man's heart. And what he recognized was this. There's something else. There's someone else that's sitting at number one in your life. And in order for me to be there, that has to move. Jesus is saying today, is there something else? Is there someone else that has number one in your heart? Some of us think, God, I want you to just share, share the throne. Scoot over a little bit because my money is there. Jesus, make some room. My, my lifestyle, I can't give this up. Jesus, make room. I, I, my boyfriend, my girlfriend, I, I love them too much. I just can't give this up. Jesus is saying, if you want to follow me, the only way to follow me is if I'm number one in your life. And I cannot share first place with anybody or anything. We need to get to a point where we're so tired of the results we're getting in life that we commit to giving God our everything so that we, we can see something new happen. I believe this can be the best year of your life so far. And I believe it can only get better and better. And if it feels like it's just been getting worse and worse, why don't you try changing sides? Join the winning side. Join the victorious side. Join the abundant side. Join, join, the, join the free side. Join the joy-filled side. Join the side of Jesus. He's the only one that can sit at first place in your life. You might feel right now like this, this man, this rich young ruler, He was sad. He went away. He had many possessions and he was unwilling to remove what was sitting at first place in his life to put Jesus there. My question to you is, you have a choice. Are you going to put Jesus first? Or will you let whatever's there now stay there? Because remember, only one person can sit in first place. I want to ask you this. Actually, I want to show you something. The Bible says this, that, the, that we all fall short of the glory of God. How many here have made mistakes before? How many here have sinned? Let's just call it what it is, sin. I've sinned. Some people didn't raise their hand, but that was a sin. I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm like, I ain't never sinned. Lie. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I know, we've, we, we all know we've sinned. We're all in the same boat. Me too. All of us. The Bible says this, the wages of sin is death. Price for sin. Eternal separation from God forever. 
let me say it very simply for you. The, what we owe for sin is hell forever. That's the only way we could pay for it. Separated from God. So it sounds like there's no hope because all of us have sinned, we've admitted to it. And if the price for sin is death, that means I owe that price. That's the bad news. You want the good news? The good news is that God loves you so much that he said this, I love you this much that I'm willing to send my son Jesus. And Jesus was willing to, to send himself and go himself and be obedient to pay the price on your behalf. So Jesus lived in this world. He died on the cross. And the reason he died on the cross was not because Jesus sinned, not because Jesus made mistakes, was because you and I made mistakes. The what kept Jesus nailed to the cross were not three nails. What kept him on the cross was his love for you, to see you free, to see you set free, to give you eternal life and forgiven of your sin. Jesus went to the cross to pay for the price that you and I owed. It should have been us, but Jesus paid your death penalty. Now the Bible says, whoever believes in him, confesses him as Lord, repents of their sins, which mean, God, I turn away from whatever's been number one in my life and I make you number one. Whoever does this, the Bible says, will be saved. You can be forgiven today. You can be saved from hell. You can be saved from eternal judgment. You can be saved from the power of your sin. And you can be set free today because of the eternal love of Jesus. You're not too far. You're not too far from God. I've made so many mistakes. I've been to church so many times and I still live in sin. I've messed up. Can today be the day? What if today was the day it all turned around? Let's put God first today. Put your faith in Jesus. No amount of good will save you. Going to church a hundred times in a row will not save you. Being a member of the way will not save you. All of these things will not save you. None of this will save you. The only one who can is Jesus. Give your life to him. Make him number one. I want to count to three. When I count to three, I want whoever in here is saying, I want to put God number one. I want to be forgiven of my sin. And I want to be saved. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand and just let God know I'm putting you first. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this room. I'm proud of you guys. I'm proud of you. I see you. I see you. I'm proud of you guys over here. I'm proud of you guys. I see you guys in the back. I'm proud of you. Keep your hands up. I'm proud of you, bro. I see you. I see you guys. I'm proud of you. I see you guys back there. Anybody? I see you. I see a whole row right there. I see you guys right here. Anybody else? I see you, brother. Dominique, I love you, man. This Could this be the day? Do something before anybody leaves. I want no one to leave. Just give me two more minutes. Can we stand to our feet? Just stand to our feet right now before anybody leaves. In this moment, this moment is very, very important because somebody's eternal life has just shifted right now and it's shifting. If you raised your hand, I want you to do one more thing for me. I'm not gonna embarrass you. I'm not gonna ask you to talk on a mic or anything. We just wanna pray with you. Will you give us the honor of praying with you? Could you make your way out of your seat and come forward? We have a whole team, a prayer team up here. They want to greet you and pray with you. If you raise your hand, even in the back row, right here in the middle row, to my left and to my right, if you raise your hand, come forward to the front. Come on, let's clap, church. This is a big moment for those that are saying yes to Jesus. They're saying yes to his call. Come on, this is where we get excited, church. Give God some praise. Yes. Come on, this is awesome. If you raise your hand, maybe there's someone that came with you that raised their hand. Ask them, if you want to go up there, I'll go up there with you. Just ask somebody. We need a few more altar workers. We need some ladies over here. Altar workers, DG leaders. Maybe if you did altar last service and we need you again. If you're a DG leader, come on up. We need you. We need some help up here. Thank you, guys. Thank you, leaders. I want to make sure everyone has someone with someone. Love you, man. God bless you. I want to make sure someone has, everybody has someone to pray with them. Praise God. Let's give a hand for those that are making their way forward. This is awesome. Okay, we're going to pray. We're going to pray and then we'll dismiss together. But for all those that came forward right now, do me a quick favor. Just look at me really quick. 
Everybody that came forward, just look at me real quick. This is the best decision you ever make in your life, making God number one. But just know this, this is, this is a decision we make every morning. Every day we make this choice. Is God gonna be number one today or somebody else? So I wanna encourage you, you're not gonna do this alone. We're gonna be here to help you, walk you through it. And if, you, if you're not in Holy Warriors, we have a class for you. It's called Starting at the Way. It's gonna teach you what it means to be saved. We're gonna help you get baptized. And the person in front of you, they're gonna pray with you and they're gonna get you signed up for your next step. Come on, this is number, when God's number one, we follow his lead. We do what he's called us to do. How many are ready to do what God has called us to do? I probably need a dozen more leaders up here, please. About a dozen more leaders, please, if you're a DG leader and God is calling you, come forward. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. I need some youth leaders as well. If you're a youth leader, please come up here. There's some teens up here. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross and raising from the dead so that I can be saved. From this moment forward, you are number one in my life. I put you first as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me, God. I know I sinned against you. I confess my sin to you now. But thank you for cleansing me, for washing me, and making me pure in your sight. I receive your righteousness. I receive your Holy Spirit. Fill me now with your strength to live for you. Fill me with your peace, with your joy, with expectation of an amazing year. This will be the best year I've ever had because of you and because I'll keep you first. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen and amen. Church, can we give God some praise right now? Now, I didn't get to the blessings. There are a lot of blessings attached to putting God first. Pastor Marco will be here next Sunday. He's going to have an amazing word for you. We love you so much. We're bringing our first fruit offering next Sunday and all throughout impartation. God bless you. Next service is Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We'll see you then. If you need prayer, come forward. We'd love to pray with you.